One day my pastor suggested that I go on a preaching course to enable me to preach across many of the churches in the local area. And it sounded like a good idea. I thought, yes, that would support me preaching the gospel, spreading the good news and the truth. So I agreed to go on the course. And then one morning, not long after, after I'd started the course, the Holy Spirit said to me, what are you doing? This isn't for you. And what he did next is just another example of the miracles that God does in our lives. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name's Paul. I'm a former atheist, now an evangelist, now a lover of Jesus, a lover of people. I'm out on the streets preaching the gospel, praying for the sick, and I see God move powerfully. And I also work with a group of people to minister to the homeless and to those that are in need. And if you'd like to support the ministry, then please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and ring the bell to be notified of future videos. So I wasn't planning to make a video today, but the Holy Spirit had been tugging at me this morning to actually make this video. So let's go back to the situation and put some context around it. I'd been an atheist and I'd given my life to the Lord. And just recently, I'd had the Lord speak to me and had a real encounter that changed the course of my life. And that's like when Saul was spoken to by the Lord in Acts 9. And after this event, I started to get more involved with the church, doing more for the Lord, and found that I would speak more in the church. And my pastor suggested that it would be good to go and start speaking in other churches, but in order to do so, I would need to take a preaching course. And that sounded like a good idea, to take a preaching course that would enable me to get deeper into the understanding of the Bible, of the Word, and to be able to go and share that and share my passion for Jesus to others in other churches. So I started doing the course and I was about three weeks in and I got up one morning and the Holy Spirit said to me, what are you doing? This isn't you, which took me by surprise. And then I said to the Holy Spirit, well, you're in charge. I'll follow what you say, but it was my pastor's suggestion and I don't want to offend him. So in order to get me out of this, I need you to help me deal with him and get him to see that it's a good idea for me to come away from this course. About 16 minutes later, if that, the telephone rang. It was my pastor on the phone. And he said to me, I've been speaking to my line manager and I don't think this course is for you. And then I relayed the story of how the Holy Spirit had spoken to me that morning and said it wasn't, but if I was to come off the course and there's confirmation, he needed to speak to my pastor to say that he agreed I should come off the course. But this was one step further. He'd proactively spoken to the pastor and the pastor had rung me already before I'd even had a chance to even have a conversation with him. <laughs> Just amazed at how God works. What a miracle and what a confirmation of what he does. And on the face of it, I thought, what a strange thing to do for me to go in and to be doing a discipleship and learning more about the word. But what a strange thing to do to take me out of it. And I just want to go back to what Jesus said in John 16 about the Holy Spirit. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I am leaving. For if I do not leave, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So Jesus sent the helper, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is here to help guide, teach. There's lots of things in the Bible that talks about what the Holy Spirit does. But it's here to help us along a very real journey. He knows what's best for us. He knows the path that we should be taking. If we learn to let him lead, if we expect that he will guide us, if we have an expectation that he will be guiding us, then he will lead us into our path. He will help us, he will teach us, and he will show us the way. And he does that when we ask him for guidance and we ask him for direction. But he also does that when we don't ask him. He'll give us direction and he'll lead us on a path like he did with me with that course. But there needs to be that expectation that you will let him lead. It's a really important point. It's about believing that he is here right now to help us, to help you, to help me. And it's about understanding how he helps, what the Bible says about how he helps us. The Bible says he helps in different ways. He gives us knowledge, fills us with power, he teaches us, he comforts us. So importantly, do you position yourself with that expectation 
and being yielded to allowing yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit. And in this particular instance with the course, then the Holy Spirit revealed that there were two things that he was teaching me. The first one was not to replace his teaching and his leading with a program that wasn't aligned to what he wanted me to learn and do. And the second one was about hearing from the Holy Spirit and, and when he speaks to obey what he says. And because I didn't take the course, did this mean that I didn't get a deep understanding of the scriptures? No, let's just read John 14 and Jesus says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of all that I said to you. Now, I hadn't taken that course, but my pastor often marveled about my growing in knowledge of the Bible and of the things of God. And he knew it was the Holy Spirit that was at work and was teaching me and leading me these things. And interestingly, one day, someone who was of a Christian denomination, but there was heresy in their teaching, came to my house and I'd never met them. They were door knocking and they started to talk to me about scripture and about Jesus. And just like the Gnostics in the early second century church that evolved and had some very strange teachings about Jesus, so had this particular individual. And as they started quoting scriptures at me, I started firing back scriptures in response that disproved what they were saying. And they were selecting scriptures to try and put a message over and say what they wanted to say. But I kept coming back with scripture after scripture after scripture. And in the end, the individual said to me, he said, do you know what? Actually, I can't answer that point. He said, I haven't been to Bible college like you have. And I just said to him, said, I haven't been to Bible college. I've actually have the Holy Spirit telling me right now the different scriptures that I need to say to you in response to what you're telling me. I've not been to Bible college, not been to theology college. I've not got a degree. All I've got is the Holy Spirit telling me the scriptures as I'm having this conversation with you. So there is example of letting the Holy Spirit lead, letting the Holy Spirit teach. And as Jesus said there, he will teach you all things and he will remind you of the things that I've said. So let me just pick those two off for a moment. Was the Holy Spirit saying that the course was bad, that all programs are bad? No, he was just saying that that course wasn't for me and it wasn't in line with my calling. There are good programs and there are bad programs and it's about discerning which ones are good. There are programs that have led to people having a deep discipleship with the Lord and there are programs that have actually led people to Jesus. So there are good programs out there and it's biblical to go and get discipled and to take anointed teaching from anointed teachers. In Acts 2, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So yes, being taught by God's anointed is right. And this needs to go hand in hand with hearing and obeying what God says and what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. So let me just read from Acts 9. And this is where Saul has heard from the Lord. He's had scales on his eyes. He's gone to a house and he's blind for three days. And then Ananias goes and prays for him and the scales fall from his eyes. And this is what happens after that. Now for several days he was with the disciples who were in Damascus. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue saying, He is the Son of God. All those hearing him continued to be amazed and were saying, is this not the one who in Jerusalem destroyed those who called on this name and had come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? But Saul kept increasing in strength and confounding Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that this Jesus is the Christ. At this point, Saul was in Damascus, not Jerusalem. So he wasn't with the apostles and he wasn't being taught. It says in that Bible verse, immediately he started proclaiming Christ. Immediately after his encounter and the scales removed from his eyes and being filled with the Holy Spirit, he was proclaiming Christ through the power of the Spirit. Just before that Bible verse, we're reading verse 17. 
Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like fish scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight and he got up and, we, and he was baptised. So you see Ananias prayed for him, his eyes opened, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he was baptised. So you can see from these two Bible verses that it's biblical to get anointed teaching, but it's also biblical for us to be acting and hearing on the Holy Spirit. And I believe that that's why Holy Spirit wanted me to make this today, is to emphasise that the two go hand in hand. So another example from my past, I used to be a youth leader in a church. And when I was a youth leader, I was part of a team of youth leaders. And every quarter the youth leaders would meet and we would say what we're going to do the next few months of teaching. And very often someone would have got a book that took us through a programme of teaching for a few months. Now when I prepared for whenever I taught, I always asked Holy Spirit what he wanted me to do. And mostly he wanted me to teach something that wasn't in the book and to do something different. But when he said to me he wanted me to teach something, he would then back it up with his power and with miracle signs and wonders. I remember one particular day, I asked Holy Spirit what he wanted me to teach on, and he gave me a subject and Bible verses. And when I pulled them all together, I realized there was about 30 minutes of material, but the actual youth group was for one hour. So I said to the Holy Spirit, what is it that you want me to do for the remaining hour? And he went, I've got a plan for that. So I turned up to the youth meeting and I did what the Holy Spirit wanted me to do. And when the 30 minutes was up, the presence of God fell in the room and Holy Spirit started convicting the kids. Kids, some kids were weeping, but there was a sovereign power at work. And interestingly, one of the youth leaders who was unaware of what was going on came through the door to make an announcement. And as they walked in and felt the presence of God and saw that God was just ministering to all the youth and I was just sat in a chair in the corner not saying anything, not doing anything. Then they backed out of the room and closed the door. Again, a balance and being led by the Holy Spirit. So how do we make sure we don't get into error? How do we make sure that we're open to what the Holy Spirit is doing? How do we combine the teaching that's out there with what the Holy Spirit says and helps us with? And what I have done is I've established a filter to allow me to discern what is of God and what isn't. So if I have someone that is teaching me or speaking to me, then I look at their life and I have a number of questions that I want to work out if they're anointed and if they're full of the Holy Spirit. The first one is, do I see the fruit of the Holy Spirit in their life? Do I see love, grace, mercy, a love of Jesus? Do I see kindness? in what they're teaching and what they're doing. Do I see that in their lives? That's the first thing. The second thing is, do I see the power of the Holy Spirit manifest in their life? Do I see them healing the sick? Do I see them casting out demons? Do I see them sharing the gospel with people openly and professing Jesus? Do I see them raising the dead? And what I do is I set a filter up and if you tick all of those boxes, then you'll get my undivided attention. Secondly, is what they're teaching scriptural? And does it align with the Bible? And then finally, what does the Holy Spirit tell me about that teaching? Does it align with what Holy Spirit's been saying to me in my life? Does it align with what the Holy Spirit reveals through scriptures in the Bible? And what does Holy Spirit teach me out of what's just been said? And don't get me wrong, I know everybody is not perfect and not everybody is going to tick all those boxes, me included. I'm not perfect. Only Jesus is perfection. And that means that Holy Spirit discernment is important. So I encourage you that everything that I say on any of these videos, you take it to the Lord, you take it to the Holy Spirit, you test it with scripture. But hopefully you can see that being helped, led, taught by the Holy Spirit is scriptural, it's what the Bible teaches. And it's not a case of leaving space in our lives for him to work and to, to lead us. It's a case of putting him at the forefront 
in every circumstance, in every situation, expect him to lead, expect him to teach, expect him to help. And have that expectation that he's going to move in power. Even Jesus had to be baptised by the Holy Spirit before he could start his ministry. We're no different, it's the same for all of us. So if Jesus is the perfection and he had to be baptised and he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, then the same applies to us. I just want to bless you and just ask the Holy Spirit that you just bless everybody that's watching this. In the name of Jesus, that you would fall on them mightily. Holy Spirit, you'd fill them with your presence. And Holy Spirit, you would teach them and help them with all their circumstances that they would learn to hear your voice. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Amen.